Good morning everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Kirby and this is a day in the life of a mobile mechanic. Right, first job is this Civic and um, the customer had a fight with a Verge and lost. Um, you can see he's obviously gone up a grass Verge and this wheel is just flapping about. So we can have a look and see what damage we've got. Ooh, brother, ooh. So obviously we're gonna need a new tire new drive shafts new drop link so new drive shaft new drop link definitely uh, oh yeah so we've got here it's totally split off from the ball joint um now you can see this uh, track rod arm just bent there i think the shock absorber will be fine by the looks of it you can see all the mud and dirt that's got up there that's gonna have to be cleared right so I've just been to the XC90 that I went to last week uh, smoke tested it uh, there was smoke bellowing out of the uh, PCV valve so um, I've just been to put that on and the customer was there come out had a cup of tea with me so I had a chat that's just a bit rude filming, I think. Um, but yeah, put the PCV valve on, and um, although it was better um, driving-wise, he said it wouldn't change gear, wouldn't get out of 10 miles an hour. But just, it was just uh, very flat still. So um, there was a fault for the boost pressure sensor, um, something to do with signal or something, if I remember rightly. Um, I've checked the wiring. So we've got uh, power and ground and signal wires there. Um, so I've ordered a new sensor. I tried cleaning the sensor and putting it back in, but it didn't work. Um, so yeah, that's that fault I thought might have been in there because uh, the system was recognizing a, a lack of boost, um, but obviously not. So we'll be back there this afternoon, pop that sensor in, hopefully should all be good. Right, this is the car the customer's got. If anybody knows what it is in the comments, let me know. It's an import. But we've got some damage here. We've already taken out the light. We've got a drive shaft to do. Um, but first, we need to sort out these battery terminals. Um, customers supplied these things here. So we'll see if these are going to work with what we've got here. And then apparently a fuse went and there was some other electrical issue. So we'll have a look at that. Right, this is kind of where we're at. I've had to get some longer screws. But I'm just now realising they might be too long. They might hit on the battery depending on how the, the battery sits. Um, it's not really the best. But we just want to get it working. So we'll neaten that up in a bit. Put the battery on and then we can have a look at some other faults. Yeah, big old battery. Look at that, that's all been misshapen as well. Right, that's uh, that side sort of just unneatly done. So we can get this powered up now. Oh, I've just got to put back on this. Damn it. Right, that's it on very neatly just to test things out. Um, we'll neaten all of this up afterwards. So we've just got to check out um, a fuse blown or something now. Um, we'll see if it starts and drives or runs at least anyway. Alright, so that's on. Ignition's on. And we're just going to start testing some... Oh, just going to start testing some fuses. Okay, they're all okay. Well, we've got some more fuses up here. 
just like that it's working uh, it wasn't turning on before right next you got this drive shaft to put in brand new second hand um, it's just uh, come out in there I think that's all failed there's just a few bolts we've got to take off one for this strutter leg uh, we'll get this ball joint out possibly obviously the big nut on this side maybe the ride height level sensor here and then we might have enough room to get that all out <laughs> There we go, one very broken drive shaft. Right, before putting the old one in, or the new, brand new second hand. Right, and just before we put that in, I like to just put a bit of oil all around these splines. Right, that's it, all done. New drive shaft, everything back together, everything tightened up with the suspension raised. Needs a new uh, lower arm anyway. But that'd be it. Um, put it all back together, I think. Clean up the wiring terminals. Yeah. Right, I am, um, as you can see, back up the unit um finished off that honda and that's right on the edge of my area of where i work um and then i came all the way back um to sort of where i live to pick up the boost pressure sensor for the xc90 that I didn't film um picked that up and that was about a 40 minute drive Five minutes up the road to the customer, get there, and they've given me the wrong one. So I've ring, rung him up, give him the reg, tell him what I need, even gave him the Volvo part number. And he was like, yeah, that's the wrong one you've got. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've got it in my hand. And obviously the right one wasn't on the shelf. Um, so I did want to come up the unit to try and get a start on this one series. Um, this, I don't know if I filmed it, um, has got a leaking oil filter uh, housing um, and coolant runs through it as well. Um, I can't remember if I filmed that last week. Um, but this unit is probably about 15 minutes away from that Honda job. So I've driven 40 minutes there, 40 minutes back. The time's now five o'clock. I've just got work coming out my ears at the minute, so um, I need to get a start on this at least um, and have it back for the customer for tomorrow. Um, so yeah, I'll get started on this now. Might show you a little bit of it, but if not, the rest of it will be in the next video after this. Right, I've got to this stage here, so all the wiring looms come out of the way, um, inlet manifolds out of the way, just taped it up, put a glove over the intake there. Um, and we're still not that close to getting it out, to be honest. Um, well, not too far away, but um, we're going to have to take this coolant pipe out. We're going to have to disconnect the alternator. This is the new unit here. Look at it. It's a monstrosity. So uh, I think it's leaking from these seals at the back here. Just sits under the engine bay like that. So we've got one, two, three, four bolts to take out. And then the oil cooler attaches to this bit here by the looks of it. Right guys, that's uh, me done for the day. It is about quarter to seven and it's not quite out um every everything is out a bar two bolts so you've got one bolt so you've got one bolt there at the bottom right you can see 
and then if you follow that bolt round on the plastic housing up between the gap um, there's a bolt there and um, to get to it to get to it you need a E10 but on a quarter inch drive um, and I've only got it on a half inch drive and a half inch three eighth drive um, but there's just not there's just not enough space there to get um, the socket on so um, I'm gonna see if Carl next door tomorrow if he's in see if he's got a quarter inch one and uh, get that housing out let's get on with this um, there's one bolt right down the back there you can just see that little e torques there and the only way i think i'm going to get to it is with a quarter inch um e torques e10 um because my three eight um e torques just wasn't fitting so if this doesn't fit i have no idea what i'm gonna do right that tricky bolt's done <laughs> Um, hopefully there should be one more bolt and then it should come out. Should. Right. We are out. And you can just see the culprit just there. See that split um, seal there? That's what's been leaking. All right, is this gonna come out nicely? Yes. We are up to about eight o'clock, just gone, gone eight o'clock now. Uh, and it's pretty much all back together. Um, just had to make sure everything was rooted right, everything plugged back in. Um, just plug that back in, because I had to take that back off. That's all plugged in. And one thing I didn't check is if this new housing comes with a new filter. All of like the VW ones I've done, like the uh, oil filter housings with coolers, they all come with a new filter inside. And so does this one. Happy days. Right, he's running. Had to take bits off again because this little valve here was just dangling down. Yeah, so I had to take a few bits off. Fucking so annoyed with myself. But we got the top done. Just gonna check all the fault codes, make sure there's nothing left. Well, there will be fault codes because I've had the ignition on with things unplugged. Um but we're just scanning it now. It's detected it nice and easy. So we've just cleared all the fault codes and we've got nothing left. It's all green. Uh, let's go back. Right, that is me finally done for the day. What a long day. What a long week. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed it. Please comment, like and subscribe. Especially like, especially subscribe. Help me to keep going and doing this stuff that I love, I love so dearly. Anyway, see you on the next one.